You're listening to the Redditch Standard Podcast because you have impeccable taste. Hi there, my name is Ross Crawford and welcome to the Redditch Standard Podcast. Today, once again, we are delighted. It's a second visit from Paul Hughes from the Palace Theatre. Hello there, Paul. Hi, Ross. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to see you too. And we are joined once again by Eve Watson, our journalism student, who's, uh, who's here helping us out again. Hello there, Eve. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> That's great. It's good to see you. And, well, we're here, Paul, because we're just talking about the Cresta Run. At least I was talking about the Cresta Run. We're in this bob sleigh and we're about to shoot off down this slope, which is the running order for the Palace Theatre this autumn season. And you've got something like 70 shows coming up, haven't you? It's very nearly that, uh, that number, yes. It's a really packed season. I mean, we've always tended to have a, a really good autumn-winter season because, of course, with the uh, dark nights coming in, people need something to do, have some live entertainment, and we try and make sure that there's a plenty, plenty of choice for them to choose from at their own local venue. So, uh, consequently, we've sort of packed it to the gunnels with a mix of entertainment to try and suit all, all sorts of people, all tastes. And uh, we hope to see a lot of people through the doors over that period. I mean, just, just looking at the start, I mean, you've got Jimmy the Whirlwind, White, the, the snooker player. Then you've got uh, a, a John Denver tribute. Uh, you've got the Marty Wilde. The one and only. The one and only Marty Wilde and the Wildcats. And then you've got, you've got a Die Straits tribute uh, coming in. I mean, just the start is, is incredible. That's just the first week. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly packed. And as you can see, it's fairly diverse in the, in the choice, of, uh, choice of entertainment and styles of music. So hopefully there'll be something out there that will uh, appeal to uh, the good citizens of Redditch and beyond. Yeah, and, and I gather that tickets are already selling pretty well, aren't they? Yes, we're doing really well on ticket sales. They're uh, flying out of the doors for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the shows. The comedy shows, of course, are very, very popular. Uh, Rob Beckett, I think, has almost sold out. Ed Byrne isn't very far behind. Well, he's a big name, isn't he? He's Ed a Byrne? big name. Uh, we've also got um, Jack D, who didn't actually make it into the programme because he was a late booking. And I think we've got about three seats left for him. So if you want one of those, be quick, is what I, <laughs> what I say to you there. I mean, I mean Jack D, he's a, he's a really big name, isn't he? He's a really big name, yeah. We were really lucky to, uh, to get hold of him and we're quite excited. And we think actually he'd quite like the venue because, of course, it's, a, it's an intimate space. And he can take in the entire audience and get really good feedback. Yeah, and no doubt he'll have a few choice comments to make about Redditch and his oh, surroundings I'm sure, as well. I'm sure he? the ring road will come in for some, uh, <laughs> some stick. It usually does with the comedians. <laughs> and, but uh, as well as the comedy, uh, you've, got, uh, you've got lots of tribute acts as well and, and some, some genuine acts as well. If I, if I can say genuine, you've got, you've got Joe Brown. And I love... Joe Brown. Yes, I mean, I think it's been about four years or so since we had Joe at the theatre last, and he's such a consummate musician. I mean, he plays so many instruments, uh, he's got a distinctive style, uh, and I think we're looking forward to uh, hearing some of his uh, songs and uh, enjoying his musicianship. Yeah, I, I mean, here am I, I'm mentioning these people. I, I don't know, if, have you heard of Joe Brown, Eve? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm Marty Wilde? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, w when I mentioned the John Denver tribute to, to Eve, I had, I had to sing Leaving on a Jet Plane. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yeah, one of his... Uh, <laughs> he sings that Country Road song. Country well, Road, I Rocky Mountain that. High, I think, was yeah. another one of his. <laughs> I mean, his songs were fantastic, and he also uh, wrote for uh, many other uh, country stars. Um, and unfortunately, he, he sort of came to a very um, sort of sad end by uh, crashing in an experimental plane. He was a pilot, and he'd got a new experimental plane that he, he was flying, and something went wrong, and that was the end of him. And you sort of get that sort of thing with some of the, some of the uh, other sort of pop stars having these sort of strange accidents in aeroplanes. Yes, yeah. Uh, but... I think it was... I wanted to say Little Richard, but I'm not sure whether that was... No, it wasn't him. It was Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly. Buddy, Buddy yeah. Holly. That, that was Claire, our, uh, there you go. our sound engineer, coming in there. 
She knows yeah. more than she knows more than I do. Yeah, she's... I'm still I'm still fairly a spring chicken, but <laughs> I I read about these things. <laughs> so. And uh, uh, you know, we mentioned the the tribute acts as well. And what one I've looked at, looked at is uh, the music of Bob Marley, legend. That's coming along in uh, in October. Yes, we had we had that about eighteen months ago, and uh, it proved very very popular. So we thought we'd give it another another go for people who like the reggae sound and the uh, Bob Marley experience. Yeah, well, well, I think he crosses all all genres, doesn't he? Yes, I, I think he's sort of fairly universal um, on the on the reggae sound. So uh, I think that'll be a very good evening for uh, for people to come and uh, have a have a good night out at the theatre. Yeah, and and of course we've also got the studio as well, haven't we? We have indeed. We've got a, a right mixed bunch in the studio. Um, I mean, from from things like um, the golden age of canals, the lost films of World I War know, Two. That, that's that's which a strange actually, one, isn't it? It is, but it's already sold twenty one seats out of sixty four. So obviously, there are some people out there who are interested in the historical side of things. Um, so it'll, it'll be quite interested to see how that goes. It was it's been brought to us by the same person who did the. Um, show about the history of the Flying Scotsman that we had, I think, a couple of seasons ago, which also proved very popular. So I think that would be quite an interesting one for anybody with a historical bent. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, if these are going to be factual or are they going to be fiction? Oh, yeah. uh, no, I think, I think they're, they're factual, um, based on um, sort of work and things that they've done. And actually, um, I think the, the one on the canals was also based on a TV programme that they were doing. So there will be clips from that um, and how the canals were brought back. Um, because obviously, after, after the railways came along, the canals fell into disuse. Mm-hmm. Um, they became overgrown. And it's only, um, you know, since about the 1960s, 70s that the Canal Trust was set up. And they started opening up these um, sites again. And, of course, they proved extremely popular, certainly for holiday, holiday makers, people getting uh, canal cruises and going, well, all around the country, basically. And I think it's also sort of been made popular by um, uh, Prunella Scales and um, her husband, Tim, I've forgotten his surname, <laughs> conveniently, who've been doing a programme on canals around the country. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, you know, uh, it's, it's fascinating, and you know, like you say, there's just so much to choose from here. Um, I mean, this psychic Sally just sprang out of me there. Um, seven drunken nights as well. Uh, That's a good Irish evening. If you're up for the crack, you want a bit of the Blarney Stone. It's uh, time for seven drunken nights. And, and there's one here: an audience with the bar steward sons of Val Dunigan, one thousand light beers from home. Yes. Now. We weren't quite sure what we were we were getting with this. It was it was pitched to us. This is a a group of three lads who um, tour sort of festivals, and they they sort of do sort of Mickey takes of um, popular country and western music and festival type music, um, and we've sold something like three hundred and fifty seats. <laughs> Um, and we'd never heard, we'd never heard of them. Um, so obviously there's an audience out there. I think they're quite big on, uh, YouTube. Right. If you, if you look them up on YouTube, you'll see what you're, what you're going to be getting. Um, why they chose Val Dunican, I'm not quite sure. They all turn up in, uh, sort of tank sweaters. tops. Yes. And they've <laughs> all got these very strange sort of blonde wigs that they wear. But they're actually brilliant musicians, so I think that'll be quite an interesting one. Yeah, it, it, it sounds fascinating. Again, you probably don't know who Eve Valdunican is. No, or sorry. Was, you know? <laughs> well, he used to be very big on a Saturday night, didn't he, the Valdunican show, on and his rocking chair. <laughs> but, but, but that kind of dates us, doesn't it? Yes, I, I feel really old now. <laughs> it, it, is there anything for the younger generation like, like Eve to go for? Um, well, we've got uh, uh, a tribute to, is it Ari, Ariana Grande and 
Ariana Joe, Grande, yeah. Joe Swire, yeah, I don't know how she pronounces her surname. <laughs> you see, that's where I fall down now. You'll know who, who it is, and, and I'm not being able to pronounce her surname, which is very uh, unfortunate for me. I think, I know, yeah, she's quite young. She's, I think she's about 10 or something. The jo- Jojo Siwar, I think it is, yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> And we've also, I mean, sort of looking at sort of the younger family type audience, we've got uh, uh, two performances of the Snow Queen, um, which is which is coming up. And we've just, I mean, going from the rebli- sublime to the ridiculous, um, we've also we've also got the Russian uh, ballet coming in doing a production of Swan Lake or Swan Puddle on the palace stage, maybe, because <laughs> it's slightly smaller. But uh, I think that would be a, an interesting one for young. Uh, children to take a start on on ballet. Yeah. Are there any particular favourites that you're looking forward to? Well, I'm. Quite, I'm I have to say, I'm quite looking forward to uh, seeing Joe Brown, um, just because he's such a great uh, musician. Um, and I would love to see Jack D, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get a seat. <laughs> I might have to stand in the lighting box <laughs> at the back and uh, uh, catch him when he's on there. Yeah, well, it, again, it's it's a great program. Now we mentioned earlier um, when we we're downstairs about people filming shows on their mobile phones. Yes, it's something that seems to have developed with the uh, onset of the smartphone. I know there's a lot of a lot of um, people who who think they are the bane of uh, society's life, and I have to say that although they are very useful. Um, they do cause us a few issues in the theatre because, of course, people are coming to see a live event. And what do they do? They spend their time looking through a, a, a two-inch by three-inch screen looking and recording what's going on in the stage instead of actually sort of sitting back and enjoying the venue uh, uh, and, and enjoying the show. Um, And and I think that's quite sad, really. I think social media and Facebook have got quite a lot to answer for as far as that's concerned. Um, And, I mean, if you've come to to be entertained and you're sitting next to somebody who's got a light screen and is just looking through that all the time and videoing it, um, it does sometimes prove a a bit of a problem. Um, And people sort of take umbrage if you ask them to stop. Um, they seem to feel that they have a God-given right to film anything, anytime, any place, anywhere. Uh, so it can be it can be problematic. I think it's just uh, a thing that seems to have developed in our society. They've actually sort of developed a thing now where they say that um, you can have um, an anxiety. Uh, mobile phone anxiety separation disorder or something. So if you don't have your mobile phone, you start to panic. Um, and, I mean, I'm, I'm a victim of that myself. I mean, I, I remember I was driving, I was uh, going to a, uh, a show down in uh, Feckenham, um, and I was driving along, and I suddenly realised that actually I didn't know where the venue was. And I, I went to phone somebody up to say, where is it who was going? And suddenly realised I'd actually left my phone at home. And I was just, like, panic-stricken. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I've got no phone, I can't do anything. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, people just... They, it, they literally seem to be attached to their hands. I mean, you can see people walking up and down the street here. Just, they're not looking where they're going. You know, they're just looking at their mobile phone. You've even had people walk into lampposts be knocked over by cars because they haven't been watching what's going. And it just seems a sort of a bit of a sad reflection on society that we can't actually now get by without these pieces of equipment. Well, that's right. You've got a big star, perhaps like Jack D, coming along. And people, instead of sitting back and enjoying the experience, or if it's a band enjoying the music, Mm. they've got their phone in their hand and they're, they're just filming it. Well, to me, you might as well just watch it on the telly, which is like the same sort of thing, isn't it? You know, you're watching it through a screen. I think people should just, you know, we're asking, we're asking for about two hours of your, of your time to enjoy a show. You've paid to come and see it. Why look at it through a small screen? You're there in the live, having the live experience. It, it, maybe it's me, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm thoroughly with you. I'm thoroughly with you. Now, we haven't mentioned that 
Yeah, well, we panto. Go on, I'll mention it. It's not Christmas yet. We're a few oh, months away from Christmas. Panto. But we've got panto coming. Tell us about panto we at the have palace. Panto. Well, we have the most popular panto of all pantos. Uh, we're doing that rags to riches tale, Cinderella. So we're up with fairy godmothers, pumpkin coaches, white mice. We've got Panto Award winning Ugly Sisters for you to boo and hiss at. Um, we've got Ben Hay now as uh, Prince Charming, Prince one of Charming. the X Factor yeah. winners. Um, Cinderella is Sapphire Elia. And we've got the return of the man they call G as Buttons. He's just having a very successful season down in Cromer at the moment. And he'll be back joining us for Christmas. Cinderella's uh, uh, friend Buttons, so that should be uh, that should be a good one. And in fact, we're actually holding our junior dance auditions on uh, the first of September. So if there were people wanting to register for that, girls aged between nine and twelve, I think, if they go to the theatre's homepage, there's the information there to register if they uh, would like the opportunity to join the junior chorus for that so that's coming up and of course it's always the most festive uh, time of year it's become a tradition for people i think to come and see the uh, palace panto and we always put on a really good show and we're planning to be doing exactly the same this year we've already sold in the region of over eight thousand seats already so they're flying out of the door and we haven't really got started on promoting it yet so if you're wanting specific days you know like christmas eve or boxing day don't leave it too long because they really are flying out of the door this year. Well, that's right. And can I just say, Paul, that as someone who's seen some pretty big city productions of Pantos, by far and away the best ones I've ever seen are at the Palace Theatre in Redditch. Well, thank you for that. I'll that, that, pass that on to our Panto well, producers. They'll be delighted. I mean, that they are, without exception, fantastic. Fan, better than some neighbouring cities not too far away. I well, I, I think part of it is that you get really inclusive in, in our venue. It's, it's such an intimate venue and you can really get involved in, in the show. Um, and we try and give you, you know, great sets, stunning costumes, up-to-date, popular music, fantastic choreography, and everybody can just really let their hair down, have a really good family time out over the festive season. And there's nothing better than uh, sitting or standing in that auditorium and feeling the excitement uh, before the lights go down of all the families chattering away uh, and then getting involved with the booing and the hissing and the calling out and the singing of the songs. Baby Shark, I seem to remember. (laughs) I think every panto in the country was doing Baby Shark as the song sheet. Um, last year. I don't know what we're having this year. We'll wait and see on, on that one. But yes, it's always exciting. Um, so, you know, you've got all of these shows. How do you keep up with everything? I mean, you've got, you've got over 70. Does, does it daunt you a bit or are you um, excited? I, ha- I have a, a, a very good computerised diary <laughs> that tells me when I need to do stuff. <laughs> And it flips up on my screen and says, you need to send a press release now. You need to do a Facebook post now. You need to send out a Twitter, Twitter uh, feed now. Um, so that sort of keeps me, keeps me on track. But it's, yeah, it's a big, it's a big process. Um, there were a lot of balls in the air being juggled at, at any one time. We were just trying to keep all those going uh, over, over the next few months. As I say, come back to me at Christmas and see if I'm st- still standing. <laughs> I might be a shadow of my former self by then. Uh, that, that's great, Paul. And I know one, one final thing you want to put out is uh, some volunteers. You could do with some volunteers, couldn't you? Okay. We can always do with uh, extra volunteers. We've got, uh, we have a, a group of about 100 um, volunteers who come in and help front of house ushering, working on the bar, in the kiosk uh, and front of house uh, for the main auditorium and the studio. Um, But we're always happy to see new faces. So if there's anybody who's interested in volunteering, if they get in contact with um, Owen Goodgame, who's our front of house manager, um, they can uh, email him on owen.goodgame at rubiconleisure.com. 
www.ghostbusiness.co.uk um, and he will get back and uh, induct you into uh, the volunteer uh, band that we have. So yes, if there's anybody out there who enjoys theatre, enjoys socialising, um, then please get in contact with us. We'd be delighted to see you. That's great. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for uh, telling us all about this coming season at, uh, at the Palace. I know you're going to stick around because we've got a few news stories to talk about. But first of all, we're going to break to Claire, who's going to tell us all about the leisure things that are happening in Redditch. Over to you, Claire. For all the things to do and see this week, it's Claire Bullivant with this week's What's On Gate. Thanks, Ross. Just a few suggestions of fun things to do over the coming days from me. I'm going to start off on Saturday the 31st of August with the Redditch Charity Bikers. And this sounds really exciting. They've got a fun mystery outing going on. You and your bike will need to be at the Dog Harvester Pub. B8070R is the postcode. It's the one in Mapleborough Green. You need to be there at one thirty on Saturday and you'll meet your fellow bikers and then all leave together at 2pm to a mystery destination. Don't ask me where i've tried to find out and they won't tell me all they told me is you might have to queue up for a little bit when you get there that's all i know but they said it'll be worth it and it's going to be loads of fun it sounds intriguing right i'm not even a biker but i want to go they're a great group of guys and girls who do a lot for charity and arrange a lot of these fun rides so if you do have a bike or you love the whole biking world and want to be in a gang a bike gang who does fantastic things for charity do go and join them meet them 1 30 at the dog in mapleborough green on saturday also on saturday is another open garden for ngs and i love these events it gets you out and about and you can go and nose your way around other people's gardens this time it's at morton hall gardens b96 6sj is the postcode and apparently this garden is perched atop of an escarpment with breathtaking views and it's all hidden by behind a huge tall hedge so you'll you won't even know it's there but it's truly outstanding they tell me and it's all for charity 10 a.m until 4 p.m admission is nine pounds and there will be light refreshments and things there so what a perfect way to spend a saturday afternoon telephone them on 01386 791 820 if you do want more details otherwise just get yourself along and as i say lovely way to spend a saturday afternoon or perhaps you'd prefer some toad, rat and badger of Wind in the Willows fame on a Saturday. Well, you're in luck if you do, as there's an outdoor theatre evening happening at Forge, Mi- Forge Mill Needle Museum. Yes, Wind in the Willows will be showing. The gates open at 4.15 for picnics, etc. So take yourself some food, some drinks, some blankets and cushions. Make yourself comfortable, set up camp. And the performance begins at 5 p.m. And um, what a lovely thing to do on a Saturday night. Adults are £9 for the tickets and children are £4.50. Just hope it doesn't rain. Or on Saturday night, are you ready to rock? Well, we have Rock Against Dementia happening again. This time it's at the Railway Pub in Redditch. Loads of great local bands will be rocking out and they want you to join them. To name just a few of the bands, we've got Project Revise, The Insomniacs, Time of the Mouth. They're a great band. Like Giants, Ashley Falls, Yikes, Skinny Dogs. I could go on and on. So do try and get yourself along. It's a great cause, great music, and it's always great fun at the Railway. Moving on to Sunday, the 1st of September. I can't believe it's September already. But don't forget, on Sunday morning, it's always Studley Car Boot Sale during the summer, at least. We've got a few more weeks left, and the gates open at 6 a.m. there. Studleycarbootsale.co.uk if you want more details on that. And there's also going to be another charity ride with the Redditch Bikers on Sunday as well. This time it's in aid of breast cancer. You meet again at the Dog Harvester Pub on the Henley Road in Mapleborough Green at 9.30am this time, leaving at 10, and they are telling you where they're going this time. You're going to the Quat Cafe for refreshments and then on to Stourport. So that sounds like quite a trip. Then on Sunday evening, don't forget, it's Alan's Charity Quiz Night at the Bell Inn in Asselbank, 9pm start there. That's the perfect way to end your weekend. Then my next pick for the week is on Wednesday, the 4th of September. 
and it's the whirlwind Jimmy White at the Palace Theatre. He's one of the most colourful characters, not just in snooker, but in the whole of sport. And this is a special evening. You'll hear about his early days of century breaks through the ecstasy of major wins and 147s to the agony, he tells us, of missing out on the holy grail of snooker, the World Championship. There's going to be footage on a giant viewing screen and he has lots of stories and magical snooker moments. You'll be able to ask him questions as well and he'll also be signing merchandise and offering a photo opportunity at the end of the show. It's going to be a fun evening of stories and a good time. Box office number there is 01527 65203 for the Palace Theatre. Then my final pick of the week is on Thursday, the 5th of September. And again, it's at the Palace Theatre. And we have the music of John Denver, beautifully captured by Chris Bannister. He's incredible. He's, Chris has been touring with his solo shows since 2010. And he's performed all over the world. He is now internationally applauded for his delivery of some of the best songs ever written. And he's actually, he was actually asked to perform in Colorado a couple of years ago for the annual celebration of John Denver's life and work, performed several concerts with Steve Weisberg himself, who was with John Denver. He was his lead guitar player on all his 70s platinum albums. And this show is a tribute to the musical genius of John Denver. And as Weisberg says about Chris's performance, all the magic is there. So it's going to be special. Get your tickets. Box office 01527 65203. I hope you have a great week, everybody. Back to you, Ross. That's great, Claire. Thank you very much for everything that's happening in Redditch this coming weekend. Um, we're back with Paul Hughes. Hi there, Paul. Hi. And with Eve, and we're going to talk about a few newsy items that are coming up in the Redditch standard this week, um, one of which is to do with tasers. Now, the uh, Chief Constable of Northamptonshire Constabulary, he's uh, made the decision to equip all these frontline officers with tasers, and tasers are these, these machines that, that shoot an electric shock to uh, to the victim to the to the target and, and i think they've got a range of about 30 meters or something like that and and the chief con of uh, of north Antichur says his frontline officers are coming under so much pressure so much abuse are being attacked so much that he feels it's the it's the right step and the cost of having these tasers will be more than compensated for by the loss uh, that you know, the sick leave, etc., that his officers has, have to take because they've, they've been attacked and the stress they're under. And, uh, Paul, you know, should, should West Mercia officers, should, should they have uh, tasers? Well, I, w- I, I take the view, the sort of the pragmatic view, that um, the thin blue line has become thinner and thinner each year. Uh, and I think sometimes police officers find themselves in a desperate situation um, and with only a truncheon, or whatever they use a baton now, I don't think they use a truncheon anymore, they use a baton as protection, I don't think it's enough in some cases, especially when uh, they're surrounded, you know, it's difficult for them to get extra officers in. And, and I think if it's going to save a life or save somebody being injured, uh, then perhaps a taser is the way to go. It certainly uh, will bring uh, a, a victim down or a villain down um, who's kicking off. Um, I mean, obviously, only in the extreme circumstances. I mean, don't just go around shooting people willy-nilly with them. But, you know, for if it's a sort of a, a life... I'm not going to say well, life or death situation, but if it's a dangerous situation that... Uh, these uh, police officers are in, then, yes, I think that they should should be used. Mm-hmm. And at I the end of the day, if somebody's not doing anything wrong, then they're not in danger of being tasered, are they? Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm just concerned it might escalate matters. You know, and if, if people know a police officer is armed with a taser, it might, might make things actually more dangerous for the police officer. Well, I mean, you can, you can, you can look, at, look at the flip side... Um, that could be that could be the case, but I would I would think that if I was a police officer, I think I would feel more secure knowing that I had that in my arsenal 
um, of things to use. I mean, obviously, only as a case of last resort. I mean, at least we're not like the American police officers who are actually using loaded weapons. We haven't got to that stage yet. And yet our police are, are being faced with people with knives, people with guns, people with bats. You know, they're, they're really struggling against that tide and that criminal ele element. And I think anything that can help them in their fight a, a, against that kind of uh, uh, situation has got to be a good thing. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm just really not sure what to think about it because I, I, obviously the awful murder of the police officer recently, something does need to be done, but I don't know whether this is the right step because, as, as you said, Ross, you know, is it the right way to handle it, really? Well, well, West Mercia, to be fair to them, they said they're going to keep a watching brief on what's happening in Northamptonshire. And, uh, I mean, obviously, officers in West Mercia do have tasers. It's just not every every officer is equipped with them. And so, you know, I'm sure obviously, it's, it's one of these things that's going to evolve, isn't it, and, uh, and, and continue. Um, moving on, uh, there's a Redditch mum called Tracy Haywood, who followed her dream, and it, it's quite an interesting dream. She was at a, a school sports day, you know, stonking hot day, school sports day, and one of the one of the mums there with her said, "Oh, wouldn't it be lovely to have a, a glass of prosecco or something, whilst uh, whilst we're watching this?" And she thought, "Ah, oh, that's an idea," and she's gone off and she's created a bar in a horse box called the main event. She hooks it up to her car and she goes off to all these various venues. And it's proved such a success that she's been shortlisted for an award in the Enterprising Worcestershire Awards, which are next month. So, yeah. full marks to her. Yes, very enterprising. I think um, there seems to be a, a, a few of these sort of ideas going round. There was um, one I saw where somebody had converted a double-decker bus into a bar that's taken to festivals and like horse racing and things like this and and this thing unfolds into a into a into a bar um and i think obviously there's a there's a need for for this sort of this sort of thing and i mean all power to her elbow for uh, getting her horse box converted into a into a small bar i think uh, amazing spaces might have something to do with it, maybe <laughs> with these sort of uh, these sort of ideas. But it's uh, I hope she does well. Yeah, well, so do I. I mean, uh, when I spoke to her, it's it's gone from prosecco. I mean, she does prosecco anyway. Uh, to, to gin, of course, gin is the drink. Gin is very moment. popular. I mean, how how many different flavors of gin now can you get? I mean, they, you, you can actually go into a bar that does nothing but gin. There's so many different different flavors and sorts. I have to say, I'm not a gin drinker, so. That doesn't appeal to me, but I know there are a lot of people out there who, who like all these different flavours, strawberry, raspberry, yeah. all, these, uh, all these mixes. Yeah. Um, very popular. Eve, you look like a gin drinker. I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love a gin. <laughs> I had a strawberries and cream one the other day. That was lovely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, mm. a, it's a great idea, though. I think it's a really good idea. There's a demand for it, isn't there, really? Yeah, there certainly seems to be. Certainly yeah. seems to I, be I'm popular. with you, Paul. I can't stand the stuff. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and to be fair to Tracy, I mean, she does bespoke bars now, bespoke drinks menus. So oh, when she right. goes to... And weddings, with cocktails. Does she go to the cocktails? Yeah, yeah I'm sure she does. Well. I'm sure she does because they seem quite popular as well, don't they? The the, the cocktail flavours. Uh, I'm not going to mention any of them because I can only think of the rude ones. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and then finally, an, uh, an old acquaintance of mine, uh, somebody called Helen Hewitt, who uh, uh, lives in Churchill, and she decided uh, for the bank holiday that uh, there wasn't enough neighbourly getting together. Do, do you know your neighbours? You know, pr perhaps, perhaps you do. I certainly know my neighbours, but, but I've lived in my locality for a long, long time. And she thought, wouldn't it be a great idea on the bank holiday Sunday to have a street party? Everyone provides a bit of food, a bit of drink, a bit of music, and we all get together. And more than 70 people turned up for this event, and it turned into quite a day, and they all got to know each other. You a street party person? Uh, yeah, I I think I could go down the street party route. I remember the uh, Queen's Silver Jubilee, 
Uh, we had a street party where I lived, where I, I was in Worcester, and they shut down the road and all the tables were put out and everybody provided sandwiches, jelly, ice cream, drink, pop, crisps, you name it. Uh, everybody got dressed up and got out all the patriotic uh, Union Jack hats and all the red, white and blue bunting and uh, had, a, had a real good time. And, and I think, you know, if you can find a, a, an opportunity or an event um, to create that, it, it creates a good community spirit. I think we've lost a lot of, of that over the years. I mean, going right back to thinking about things during the war years, there was a big community spirit everybody knew everybody else they left their back doors open they could always go round and, and have a chat or borrow some milk or some sugar or that sort of thing but these days we seem very very more very much more insular um, we get home we shut the door and we don't sort of inter interact with our neighbors unless they're playing loud music at four o'clock in the morning, and then that's not in a good way. Um, and, and I think these sort of things can break down those barriers, and, and it's good to get to know other people. And certainly for people who perhaps of an older generation who don't see people on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, they might not have family, um, and, and things like that bring them out, and people can uh, find out more about them, find out stories about them, learn about other people's lives. I think, I think sometimes, again, we're a bit self-absorbed and self-interested and we live in our own little... With our little, mobile phones. Our mobile phones, yeah. <laughs> we, look, we don't interact with people. We, you know, we send a text message to the person sitting on the sofa next to us instead of having a conversation. <laughs> um, and you can spread that to your, to, to your neighbours. Um, uh, and I think it would be much nicer if you lived in a, in a, in a, in a close or on a street where you were... Uh, able to, to chat and go and talk to your neighbours um, and, uh, you know, interact a bit more on a, on a social level. I think that's all to the good. So well done her for organising that and uh, getting 70 people in is uh, a pretty bad. good achievement, not I would bad. say. Not bad. Right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming in today, Paul. Uh, we, we've got to call a halt now. Um, thanks also to Claire, who's done our sound and our leisure. Um, to Eve, who's come in again, especially today, to do the <laughs> podcast. And, uh, of course, to the Palace Theatre for once again providing us with, wow, 70 shows. It's yes, unbelievable. getting off of that number. Unbelievable. And, I mean, there's a few I've underlined here because I know I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be looking to go, for, go to those. Particularly Joe Brown. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, thanks for coming in, Paul. Thanks, Eve. Thanks, Claire. Uh, my name's Ross Crawford. You can contact me at uh, ross.crawford at boulevardmedia.com or editor at redditchstandard.co.uk. You can call me on 01527 588 697. And don't forget to check up on all your news at www.redditchstandard.co.uk. Thanks to everyone for listening and uh, speak to you next week. Bye for now.